we, we've always said it. Toman's not like the other gangs. They kind of have this like heartwarming, like family feel to them. Wake up to reality. Nothing ever goes as planned in this accursed world. The longer you live, the more you will realize that the only things that truly exist in this reality are merely pain, suffering, and futility. What up, anime people? Tokyo Revengers episode 8 recap. Um, finally, finally we get a hit from Takamichi. <laughs> but, but we get into it we're pretty much uh, the episode... We see we, we ended up starting where Takamichi is being himself. He's not giving up. He's uh, showing uh, adversity. He's not going to accept defeat. And I mean, his face looks defeated, but he, he has that heart and kind of what we've known him to be, even though he usually gets beat up throughout the whole animes. Uh, but as him and Taiju are fighting, they're they're I mean, if that's what you want to call it, really, uh, Taiju is use him as a punching bag i think that's the best way to put it um but he's not giving up and everybody's kind of like uh you know just give up takamichi like you're not gonna do it you're you're not gonna get it and he's he's just not he's remembering everything of pretty much why he did it um hakai's pretty much telling him like you're not gonna do this please stop and he's like kind of crying like you know i don't want you to die type of thing but he ends, <laughs> it's like nah, I'm, I'm, yeah laughing man because i'm thinking of that meme like guys i watch on the polls he posted a poll again for 20 for for february who cried the most in their animes and takamichi is like right in there like a number two man right next to the door like number one was midoriya but takamichi was like it was a close close one man like Damn. <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm no, sorry. no, it has to be. Bro. I'm just figuring like, at that because I'm just like, oh my god. Has to be, bro. Cause it, it it's like even like I'm surprised. I mean, he cried even in this one, even though he was like getting beat up. And I mean, but there's just moments where it's like I already expect like crying moment, crying moment, crying moment <laughs> with it and everything. Uh and so yeah, pretty much everybody's like bro you're not gonna do it i mean he did say he's gonna beat him take over black dragons we're kind of like yeah okay whatever takamichi but somehow he does like a jump in the air hits him at the right time i guess and he lands a punch on taiju <clears throat> and then you see taiju fall to like his knees and everybody's kind of shocked like they're like what the what just happened like takamichi hit him and this dude fell i mean especially like his guys are like our boss literally just fell and you and their their face gives it all up like everybody's face in the room is just like how did this happen why did this happen i'm sure us at home were like this is how is this even possible because we know takamichi he's not a fighter he he talks he he gets his way out of everything and and you still see him as he's fighting he's talking and and guiding like i'm like you're getting beat up but then you're going to hakai and turning around and being like i'm your friend if you need anything i got you and your face is all bloody and everything and and I, you get it he's trying to get hakai to wake up and everything and then you start to see like how Toman is like he was, uh takamichi starts to remember you know how he saved certain people and, and how he people trust him like mikey and draken and shifu and uh and everybody in there and uh mitsuya and the the biggest thing of it was we finally also get the secret of hakai he ends up breaking and you you didn't i didn't expect to get it this episode but he ends up telling him you know i lied i i'm not the guy that was protecting my sister you know i she would take two beatings she would take mine and and her like and, and it was kind of upsetting because you can see like her face of Yuza uh she's I mean that's her brother she wants to protect him but then also you understand where Hakai is having to tell you know a lot of people he lied to like I've been lying to you this whole time and I, I'm I'm a disgrace I feel like and 
and it goes into their backstory of like of course their brother beating them taking them to the and it was for like a, a few little things i mean their mom passed away uh when they were younger he took over the family taiju did and and he would just beat him like oh who left the toilet seat oh, okay beating who uh, who you know the food's not ready. beating and it was just like oh man like but it, it comes into that that uh I guess that Toman, we, we've always said it, Toman's not like the other gangs. They kind of have this like heartwarming, like family feel to them. And they kind of like tell Akai, like, dude, we're all like, we're all trash. Like, don't worry about it. Like Takamichi explains like, his, like he's like, dude, I'm not perfect. Mitsuya talks about his or he's like, you know, there was a moment where I left, you know, my sister's and they were by themselves. He goes, and my mom slapped me when I got home, and and I realized, you know, I was I was trash for leaving my my family there, and and you see, kind of like Mitsuya is that big brother that Hakai never had really, and he, he ends up telling uh, Yatsuya that you know I'm sorry I failed him as a big brother because he he feels like it's a part of it's his fault because of who he is also and not helping him. And so you start to see them like Kokono and Inu, of course, they're talking trash, like, you know, you're scum, you're embarrassing, you let a girl, you know, protect you, and that's embarrassing. But Tomen, the, you know, Tai, uh, Mitsuya, Shifu, and uh, Takamichi really kind of go around him and gravitate towards him. And you kind of see like a, a flashback of Yasuya, how she's dealing. She's, she realizes at this point she's not alone because where how we ended up here was of course the antagonist of the whole anime kasaki gives her the knife and he's like you know you have to take it into your own hands you have to defeat taiju which we all know the master plan of it was to take out the black dragon leader and and do that but we're finally seeing the future change a bit and they're understanding that you know there's a different way and it really awakens akai because he ends up taking off his black dragon stuff he's like you know i'm vice captain atonement and he ends up awakening like his true self and he uh even though he ends up fighting his brother uh i mean taiju always seems to be i mean we've said he's older dude's like <laughs> like late 20s and so he's he ends up telling him like you know even if you're gonna fight me uh just like oh y'all know y'all this whole church is surrounded by the murder squad of my black dragons like you're not escaping and i think that kind of helped them a bit though because they were all like cool we're gonna die here like we're just gonna go out there i mean no offense to any of them uh suya and chifu looked like they were like on one leg takamichi's face looked like hamburger meat they got ran over by a car or something and so the guy's really the only one that is like healthy and re ready to go and he he was going at taiju i mean i was giving him credit i was like okay he's gonna probably do something and i guess when taiju he had this moment where he's like i'm gonna have to kill two of my siblings in the same night why are you testing me god and he just went like full berserk mode and just started beating his brother and then his brother's laying on the floor and he's just punching him in the face and you're kind of like, oh, even though, I mean, we talked about it last episode that why aren't they fighting all together? Like, why is it just one on one? But I mean, I guess they decided to now with their one legs and everything else. But they answered a few of our questions, I guess. But it, it, you see the heart of Toman. You see the that, you know, Hakai is a new person. He's he's protecting his friends. He's protecting his family. Um, But they all also know that they're probably going to die. And I know Yasuya was like in tears and she's like, why are y'all happy? You know, you're, you're going to die here. And they're like, that's fine. Like we've accepted it. We're going to die for each other type of thing. You know, it's a bond to protect ourselves and to keep fighting and all that. And so within all of the, the fighting and everything, you, it's funny because ironically, like if you know, motorcycles and all that stuff, they all have different sounds. And I love how, like, they just know, like, Mikey's sound of his motorcycle. Like, they're all all standing there wobbly and everything. And then you just hear, in the background, they're like, 
it's Mikey. Like, and they they tell his whole like motor and and brand of the freaking bike, and I'm just like, you heard that throughout all of that, the whole church. You heard it from a mile away in the road. But I mean, Mikey said it too. He he, he has like an intuition. It feels like for his his people because he really, especially the ones he really loves, like Mitsuya and, and Takamichi now, and and so he ends up like. I don't know mikey's hard to read because he walks in like he well, first of all he walks past like all the black dragon people somehow they don't say what happened they kind of just see him and then all of them turn around and then he's walking up the stairs and then he walks in the church and he's like merry christmas everybody like random just smiling he's like what's going on here and but i did like though because they they did say a, a key part of like takamichi's of course is like oh we're saved mikey's here you know he's here we're gonna be saved and sh- and uh matsuya is like i don't know dude like we broke the truce like this is kind of on us like there's no telling and and mikey's been a, a coin flip it's he can one i mean he could be very like understanding and then he could be very like cold-hearted and and so there was a lot of of like a little flashbacks back and forth like uh everything happened where they kept going back and forth of uh, why Taiju would beat his his brother and sister and all that stuff. But all in all, I mean, I, I kind of enjoy it. Oh, man. All right. So, uh, number one, Taiju is still the main man. Uh, he has the voice of a 65-year-old man in the body of a 12-year-old. Like, wrap your head around that, right? So, he <laughs> it's just it cracks me up every time I hear him when he's when he's a child, he talking like he's forty five years old, right? <laughs> like so, they they so obviously Taiju is taking out all of his anger, right? That his mom died. We know now that's a source of anger that he feels, right? His dad is absent. That's a source of anger he feels. He feels like you know he has to take the place now. Why he's beating his brother and his sister? The way he is because he's angry, it, it 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 falls into that trope thing that I don't like and I don't really care for. Um, you know, like especially Hakai being weak, so weak that he can't protect his sister. His sister, it falls into that females have to be the greatest grandstanding thing in all of anime, right? Because like, look at every anime, you know, like a, a woman is like, uh, oh, oh, what did they call it? Opie. She's overpowered, but she's yeah. a woman, right? So it, it falls into that. I, I kind of don't like that portion of it. That's why I was kind of like, <clears throat> I wish it was for a different reason, you know, yeah. but they're right. I'm not the writers, right? So um, we find out why Taiju's beating him and everything. And Hakasha was, you know, a <laughs> mental factor of his beating him, right? Uh, you think it would like harden him, right? But it didn't really harden him. It made him even worse, right? Like a victim. That's the word I was thinking of. The whole time you were talking, I was like, man, what's that word that Hakai is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a victim, right? Like he's a victim of domestic violence, right? And this is like they could have shown it from a different perspective. Like men can be victims of domestic violence too, right? So, you know, uh, good, good for that, right? So, uh, Yuza is turns out to be, you know, uh, the badass one, right? So if she's like, I'll take the beating for both. He ends up beating them both up, right? So it falls back to that that we're missing, right? So the truce was um, Chifu, right? He set up with Taiju's that he cannot hurt his uh, Yuza, right? He can't hurt her. And uh, he ends up beating her. Yeah. And I think that's what Mikey's going to use. I, once again, I haven't looked into further into the episodes, but like, into the manga. But I think that's what Mikey's going to use as, like, hey, you broke your original truce with Chifu, which therefore we're coming for backup, right? Like, you know, it's justifiable war right now with you, right? So they, it's, it's all agreed upon. Everybody, they need Taiju out of Black Dragon. Right, like they need him out. He's out of control. Uh, even his own men say that he's out of control, right? Because they were like, "Hey, he's he's killing. He's uh, you know uh, 
arm robbery. He's, uh, you know, doing all these bad things. He's getting us in a lot of trouble. All the rich guys that he's getting from are getting kind of annoyed because they're keeping me bailing out uh, to, uh, Black Dragons. And, you know, we're losing funding. So in that sense, you know, they want Taiju out. They need him out, right? So I think it's kind of like a, a bigger plot, and they were just you, uh, Tamagichi and you know Chifu in that whole situation. They're, if they could get Hakai to kill him, it would be like more of a blood thing versus you know a game thing, right? So that being said, you know, uh, as for me, uh, yeah, I liked it. It was really good. It has a great uh, storytelling in there, of course. You know that whole. Maybe you shouldn't be picking up pews and tossing them at people. Maybe that's why your strength is so low. I don't know, bro. Like, dude, like, takes off. He has, like, a 45-pack and, like, you know, every inch of his body is muscle. And, you know, like, you know, it's like a Baki situation going on. Uh, so it's like, like, bro, like, like, and then right before we, we started recording, remember I asked you, like, why – Tamagichi landed that punch and it was so devastating. Like, to me, it's like, I feel like maybe it's like he punched him with the power of a 26 year, 27 year old man, a 26 year old man. Like, he, he punched him with that kind of power because it's like, I think he's like at like his total breaking point, right? Uh, Tamagichi is at his total breaking point. He's like almost close to death. So I think like all of his synchronicities are coming all together, right? Like all of his past, like going back to the future, going back, going back, is all coming back together. And so it allowed it, it gave him like that internal strength. That's the only, that's the only thing I could think of that he would have landed, or he just like pinpoint accurate. And it just landed that perfect jaw he, taiju really has a glass jaw and that's why he you know protects himself so well with everything else you know he maybe has a glass jaw or something like that um but hey we'll find out <laughs> soon right but a uh, guy i thought he would do more he's the freshest guy out there he's the freshest guy out there he got he has not done diddly squat for three episodes straight, right? Like he is the freshest guy. He should have been able to like make a stand against Taiju, right? Like like at least something, right? But no, nah, he got like his butt whooped in the first like two punches, right? And then like that whole uh <laughs> that power scaling thing, man, where Taiju goes. He says that prayer. <laughs> he's like like he's that that's like the literal Dragon Ball Z moment <laughs> where he Powers <laughs> up, man. He goes from level nine hundred and twenty, right? So like he levels up that when he says that prayer, right? Because like he did it before. Remember, he, he yeah. goes, you know, uh, back then, like the first time around, right? He goes, he gives that prayer, then like punches uh Tamagichi so hard, like you know. So it's like, like that's crazy, right? Uh, I like the I like the episode. Fresh perspective it gave us a lot of, to get on with. Um, Mikey showing up, dude. Oh, one of the good also good parts is when um, who is it? Chifu rolls his ankle. Like that's such a live moment. Like that kind of little details. Like if you ever got into a fight, you know, and like. Like, I don't know if you ever got into a fight, but, like, if anybody ever got into a fight, you know, those are such live action things that you can actually really do. You can really, like, step <laughs> backwards and just crack your shin bone in half. Like, because it's, like, like you don't even realize it, right? Or you can, you can like, you know, fall down and you crack your arm, you know? And you just didn't even, like, you know, there goes my arm on my broken arm now, you know, like yeah. it is the fight right then and there. Like it is such insanity when you fight, man. Those things, those things that that uh, those little details I like, you know. And uh, but um, who was the other guy? Um, there's Chifu, and then who was the other guy fighting? Uh, Matsuya. What's his name? Matsuya. Matsuya. Yeah. Um, he yeah, definitely he. Uh, you know, I thought he was gonna give a little more action out of it than what he did uh i don't know if you like it felt kind of flat his fighting scene you know like yeah. i thought he could really take on i think he was fighting coco right 
Yeah, he well, might- remember, he got hit in the head with a pipe also. So. <laughs> I mean, that's true. That's true. Like, but I thought he was going to have a little yeah. more a little more substance in his fire, right? Because yeah, they, yeah. they they built him out like he was going to be like, like, you know, badass, right? <laughs> and then he like, like, kind of fell flat on that, that fight yeah. side, of it, you know? But, uh, yeah, man, so overall, man, you know, they didn't even got him in this list thing that I have right here. Um, but I did have a question to y'all, people out there, about Tokyo Revengers. Because I was thinking about this when I was watching the episode on Sunday. <sighs> My question is, when Tamagichi first, the first episode, and he was pushed onto the tracks, who do you think pushed him? Mm. So my theory is, and look, I don't even know if they have dressed it yet in the thing, but my theory is going to be um his uh what's it what's the name of uh her brother? Uh oh I mean, not his brother. Oh man, I forgot his name. Uh, uh such the- is it is it Nato, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Nato, right? I think it was him, Nato, who pushed him. Because remember, he has to make contact with Nato in order to be sent to the past. Yeah. And when he was pushed, he was sent to the past. Yeah. So Nato retains all of his memories, right? Like he, like when Mm -hmm. when the future goes into the future, he remembers everything. So he remembers every timeline. So I'm going to throw that out there. I'm gonna throw that out there. Nato is the one who pushed him because I think they come to a, a point in realization that uh Tamagichi has to die in order for nothing to happen. Like for every to save Hinata, uh, uh to save everybody for dissolve and everything. I think Tamagichi has to die. And they come to that realization, and when they try killing him, it ends up just like doing the whole uh, chain of events. So the whole string yeah. theory, because everything is looped together, right? So uh, it's 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 all looping together. You know, they in, inadvertently start the entire thing by trying to kill him in the in the beginning. So I'm throwing my theory out there. I don't yeah. know if it's true, but I'm going to throw it out there. <laughs> you know, I'll throw a theory out there. So I'm just throwing it out there. So uh, I like that. It makes Come sense. On what would you give Tokyo Revengers? Um, I'm gonna give it a four. A four? Yeah, I'll give it a four. Um All right. I I I was gonna go a little lower, but I like the fighting. I like the uh finally Takamichi giving me something of not just a punching bag. No, uh, no, no. He's the punching bag. No, of- he is. Tokyo. He is. I mean, he's a punch bag of anime, bro. I ain't never seen someone beat up someone. Nobody in my life. Doc ties you down, but hit not. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, I don't know. I, I gave it a four. Um, I like the where it's leading into. Um, I like when it gives me the cliffhangers of Mikey. Um, for sure. Uh, he's one of the big characters in the anime. Um, I want to know also where it leads to though of, of what's gonna happen next because. The, the part of it is, the, the part I didn't like of the anime is they kept going back to uh, the flashbacks of him and his family. And it's like, you kind of gave us a good piece of it. And then you went on to the story again at the church. And then it felt like you went right back to that. And it was the same thing, just in a different camera angle in a different room. And I'm like, I already saw this. And that I kind of like, there's always those moments where I'm like, you could have done something else or you could have gave me something else. But I also like, like you said, with the ankle, I, I like how the fighting's realistic. They, these are, I mean, except Taiju. This dude is like, I don't know what the hell. But everybody else sees <laughs> That's like the power human. Of God on the side, bro. Yeah. Like, like, we, we ain't never going to stop. We got the power of side of God on the side. Yeah. <laughs> like everybody else is pretty much like human. They fight. And, and like you said, their adrenaline phases out and they, they kind of, you know, drizzle down. And, and the fighting's not like, crazy it's not like dragon ball z 10 episodes in and you're super saying it's fighting and then all right i'm stumbling i'm tired i'm 
gassed and and so i was like i kind of like that so i'll give it the the four i I enjoyed it the the storytelling the cliffhanger and and let's see what happens on the next one Eh. so i did like the episode don't get me wrong it was a good episode (laughs) was it a four i don't know i think you're being a little generous with that four i i I don't know a little generous with the four I have to agree with the gal. I have to agree with the gal from Leisure Bites. It's a, a 3.5, a solid 3.5. Reason being, reason being is what you just said right there. The flashbacks, not yes. necessary. Like we already know why Taiju is beating up his family, right? Yeah. We already know that. The flashback to the mother, which was nice. It was a good one. It, like, it made sense. He spent way too much time on the recovery portions like the talking between fighting and recovery like like if you're in a real fight no one gives you time to gather yourself put your buddy to side put him down get back up or to like the person you're fighting fight none of that happens you know what i'm saying like 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 a minute to two minute max is what you're fighting, right? All your energy, everything's expense, and that's <laughs> one to two minutes, right? Like I'm a big guy. I give you ten like my 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 boy Kevin James said, I give you ten seconds of hardcore fighting. After that, I'm done, bro. Like <laughs> I'm on the ground gasping for air. Go ahead and go ahead and send me to the hospital, bro. Nobody even touched me, but I'm going to the hospital, yeah. man. So that being said, like like that's the only thing that held me yeah. back was there was just a little too much talking conversations. I think they could have beat up the fighting a lot, lot more, and that would have made it like really great. They could have already they could have pushed Mikey in there already, you know, uh, got him in there, had the conversation at the end, and then like split it right then and there, and be like, hey, you know, like. Or was he gonna throw a punch or was he not gonna throw a punch or he's gonna walk out you know kind of left us on that hit cliffhanger that would have been good but i have to give it 3.5 because it was just a little little too too much talking in there for yeah. i know i know tokyo revenge is about top don't get me wrong but this felt more like of a fighting episode right like almost like a bahala episode where it was just straight action they gave us like a little bit of talking in the front and then action all the way up until the end of the episode and then the next episode action and then talking at the very end so you know uh four i i had to do it they protected my boy takamichi that's why <laughs> they had to talk <laughs> Look, Takamichi needs a uh, like, like you know, how her mother wrapped her arms around uh, Yusa. You know, like Takamichi needs his own angel right now to revive him because that boy is on literal death's door, man. I don't. <laughs> I'm looking at a picture of Takamichi right now, man. That, that boy, that boy is dead, man. Like, I don't know, how, I don't know how he's alive right now, dude. Like, he was literally like, like on his last breath. Like he was bending over. You just see the blood dripping down. He was like, knocked like, out. Like, watch a boxing match, right? Oh, just watch a UFC fight, right? Just watch a UFC fight and then watch the aftermath of how bad it is. Uh, I know you don't watch too much UFC, but there's one of Joanna. Joanna, if you look up jo- oh, UFC oh, women's yeah. Joanna, and she just went three rounds, three five-minute rounds, right? Her head was so swollen, and she looked like an alien. That's how bad her head was swollen, right? And it, I mean, no no, no puns to girls. They hit hard, but, you know, like, no harder than a man, right? Like, a man would hit harder. So you got to imagine Taiju hitting ten times harder, and Tawagishi should be like, his head should be like an over the head, bro. Like, like, it's like, that boy don't even have a head, man. Like, ta- Taiju has not hit at the body once to Tawagichi. Like, no. he is just straight, like, maybe like a couple of kicks to the body, right? But like, 
He has all punched to that goddamn dome of this dude. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but there was a lot. It was a good episode, man. Tokyo Revengers delivering, delivering, delivering all season long. I think season, and we have a hard time with season twos on animes because, like, sometimes season ones just knock it out of the park, man. And then yeah. season two follow ups are like horrid, you know? And then, like, they get a little better and then they don't really get really good after that. But this season two, uh, Tokyo Revengers has been really great. I like it. Um, you know, so that's it for me on Tokyo Revengers. I give it a little lower score. Nick, you one of my favorites. I'm <laughs> it's because it's because you came off the hype of Blue Lock. I know it is. Like you were watching Blue Lock and you're like, because Blue Lock out of five this episode, man. Blue, Super Blue Lock blew anything out of the water this week. Yeah, I don't care. That, that, I will argue five out of five for me, bro. I yeah. was just like. Woo! Dang, man! I was yeah. like, it's over now! <laughs> I was yeah. like, man, we need, we're, we're five, man. <laughs> like, we're, yeah. and then especially like Tokyo, that cliffing with Mikey jumping in there, it was like, all right, man, we're, now we're going to see some fighting, man. And then it ended, yeah. I was like, oh, no! <laughs> I was like, we needed to see more! <laughs> so, yeah, definitely, man. It was a good one, man. So, yeah, but other than that, man, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm done with Tokyo. It's awesome. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> I'm done blabbling. <laughs> nah, man. Uh, y'all let us know what y'all thought of the episode. Uh, was it a good one? Was it a bad one? Are you finally catching up on Tokyo Avengers? I know some a lot of people are barely realizing it's out. Uh, a lot of people were mad. They're like, I didn't know until last episode. I, I think that's good, though, that these last two episodes have been good. And so it's been getting a lot of people talking on social media. And so it's finally starting to throw that needle in of people watching it and understanding. You get to binge it. You're lucky. You get to binge eight episodes in. So you get to enjoy it. Get the story in. Um, Make sure you uh, follow us on our TikTok, on our YouTube right here at the SOG Network. We're here going to have shorts talking about these. We'll have TikTok. We'll have stuff on our Facebook, our Twitter, our Instagram. All of them. We're everywhere um let us know what other animes we'll be doing blue lock uh we're gonna be doing them um, i'm thinking increments of five since it's 20 episodes already in um if you have not watched it you need to watch it we're gonna give you everything we know about it in as much time as we can give you because it's a lot there's a lot of characters but uh make sure you uh let us know in the comments what other animes you watch because there's a lot of them coming up in march for sure there's a lot of new animes that are going to be popping a lot of big animes that are coming back and that are going to probably be a lot of content coming out for us um yeah just make sure you subscribe show love to the network and we're out peace